What is going on here? Look at the percentage. Is this a new animation just? While it's charging? Going red, half, full? Never seen this before. Good morning and welcome. Good afternoon and welcome back here to the off garage in not so sunny. It is still overcasted, cloudy, not much solar coming in today, I tell you that. I discharged the battery yesterday to 40%, charged the Tesla, we went for a drive. And then I left it at 15% overnight because we want to do the discharge test of the Yishi Young um, delivered LF280K from EVE. And now, well, we've got close to a 60% state of charge and we've got 32 amps outside only which is around 36 degrees Celsius. Whew. All right, my friends, I have already prepared everything. I've got a brand new Peter inverter, the inverter, 3.5 kilowatt, 48 volt. What a beast. Review is coming soon. One of the best standalone inverters out there on the market, 100%. And we also have the Smart Charm test already connected to the battery negative here. Positive goes directly to the inverter and we want to do a 0.2 discharge test with all these um, delivered cells here and see what's going on. So everything is ready to go. Um, as you have seen in the intro, I've also scanned the QR codes of all 16 cells now and I've got the spreadsheet here up on the screen already. So scanning this QR code with the lithium iron phosphate QR code scanner, I link this um, app down below. You get all these information, what the brand of the cell is, what kind of type this cell is, the model, the capacity in ampere hours, capacity in watt hours, the date of manufacturing, the production city as well as the production line, and interesting, how much cells they have made that day on this line. So it goes all the way from only nine that day to 5,640 that day. Crazy. So the main take from this table, from scanning all these QR codes, is to see when these cells have been produced. And most of them are from end of February, but some of them are also from end of January. Yeah, from the 29th, from the 27th, and from the 30th. So there's a bit of inconsistency in the production date, but this is not a concern at all with these cells. But I must admit, they have been produced January, February this year, and they were delivered in October, October that year. So this is like eight, nine months difference from manufacturing until I had them here. And all of the cells were delivered with around 59 to 60 ampere hours of charge, which is around 20 to 21% state of charge. So that's fine for transport. Let's go into the JKBMS here. So we are now at 55.6 volts. The BMS shows zero, but the actual um, power supply still supplies 300 milliamps into the battery. And this is just not being counted for anymore by the BMS. So all this energy going to the battery is actually slipping these counters in these BMSs. And this is probably one of the reasons why the state of charge calculation is not as accurate. You always have this 0 0.3, 0 0.4 amp slip in the BMS basically. Um, balancer is running, we've got a deviation of 191 millivolt at the moment, so this is quite high. Even I have pre-charged all the cells to 3.4 volts with some sort of absorption time afterwards. So they are all pre-charged and now the BMS does the final top balancing across all 16 cells. And we can see most of the cells are over 3.5 or 3.4 volts. Only cell number 15 is a bit low for whatever reason. So um, hopefully I don't have to open the case again and recharge this one cell until the voltage rises a bit in this cell. So let's see how long it will take actually until this voltage rises there. I'm not expecting that too many ampere hours are missing in these cells. So the balancer is now doing its thing and totally top balance the battery. We will then increase the voltage a bit more to uh, 57, 58 volt to really fine top balance the battery pack and then we do the capacity test, dumping all this energy here into the Tesla and see how much we get out of these LF280Ks. All right, um, so far there's nothing else to see. We just have to wait until this um, BMS is balancing this battery now. 
I'll be right back once this is done and then we increase the voltage slowly and get this test started. All right, my friends, talk to you in, um, I don't know. It could take one, two hours at least, I think. Um, let's see how patient I am actually. All right, later. Good morning, my friends, and welcome back to the off garage here. Yeah, it is now the next morning. Uh, it took really over, it took really overnight to top balance this uh, VC Young battery here now. So we are now at 56 volts and deviation is under 10 millivolt. All the cells are at 3.5 volts. The balancer is still kicking in occasionally when the deviation goes over 10 millivolt, like just now, and then it stops again. Yeah, so it's a start and stop thing now, but everything is nicely balanced. The, um, the JK BMS can do it. The balancer is very, very slow though, because it balances only one cell at a time, one cell discharging into the super cap and then from there into the lower voltage cell. So it really, really takes some time to do a top balance with that, but it will do it and it is super, super efficient. You don't need to do a thing, you know, connect everything, let it run and the BMS will sort out your top balancing. So I haven't done any top balancing of cells anymore when I get them. I put them from the boxes into the battery and charge the battery to 3.45 volts and then let the JK BMS do its thing. If there is no JK BMS in this box, like in the um, Seplos boxes for example, they have a very slow and passive balancing only. You need to do a top balancing manually before you put the cells in the case or connect an active balancer, which I would recommend. Because further down the track you will need an active balancer anyway for these high capacity cells. And we are talking about 300 ampere hours plus now, right? So there is a bit of imbalance. Even you have A-grade batteries, but over time there will always be an imbalance in 16 batteries. So, all right, I would say, oh, this fan is so noisy in there. Let's increase the voltage to 57 volts now. There you go, 57 volts. So we should see the power supply kicking in again, 20 amps coming in. You can see the current tapers off already because the cells are basically full. We just want to go to um, 58 volt maybe. 57.5. We have set the over voltage protection to 3.65 volts. So I'm really trying to not exceed this voltage. So the BMS turns actually off but getting as close to 58.4 volt as possible. So all the cells have close to 3.65 volts then. This is the maximum you can charge these cells to, should charge these cells to, and then they are really, really 100% full. Okay, 58 volts I have set. 10 amps going into the battery still. I've got 20 millivolt deviation at almost 58 volts. Okay, give it a few minutes here until everything is balanced out and then we do the discharge. All right, after another 10 minutes now, we are at 58.3 volts. I have slowly increased the voltage um, and we are close to 3.65 volts with almost all the cells. Cell number 15 is still a bit down. Cell number four is under 3.64 volts, but everything else is, I mean, we've got um, under 10 millivolt deviation, right? So balancer is still active sometimes, but 100% fully charged and top balanced now. Okay, let's fire up the test lander. By the way, thank you very much, Scott, for using my Tesla referral code and congratulations to your Model Y. Thank you very much. All right, I have already set the charging current for the vehicle to 11 amps because this gives us around 51, 52 amps uh, from the battery into the inverter. Okay, let's start. No, hang on. Oh. Oh, before that, we have to reset the Victron Smart Chan. There we go, sits on 100%. We go into the history down here, reset history. Yep. Everything should be on zero now. Yep, zero seconds, everything is on zero. Okay, I'm turning off the charger now. We are going back into the vehicle and start charging. Let's go into the BMS. Ah, another fan is turning on, the PETA inverter. 48, we've got very high voltage still, 56 volts, so the current will actually increase once the voltage comes down. 
Uh, deviation is going up to 30 millivolt around, which is fine at this voltage. Yeah, we can see the blue and the red cell are changing across all the other cells, so it's not sticking with one cell only, which is good. That's exactly what you want. You don't want to have one cell which is always low and one cell which is always high. So if they are moving around like this, perfect. That strongly indicates that we don't have any issues with busbar connections or bad terminal busbar resistance issues or something. That all looks fairly consistent here. Deviation goes down now to 28 as expected. All right, I think. So discharging the battery with 2.7 kilowatt, roughly 50.7 amps coming out of the battery. Time remaining, eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> There's always something I've forgotten to set this one back to 280, right? 280. It doesn't matter. This only affects the time it shows down here. So 6 hours, 22 minutes it says. Let's see how long it will take. Probably 5 hours plus. Because the cells will have over 300 ampere hours of capacity. So far everything looks good. We are discharging. Alright. See you in the afternoon. See you in the afternoon. So we are now at 50% discharge. That's at least what the JK BMS is. We've got 51 here on the smart chunt. So a quick look at the history. We've discharged 138 ampere hours or 7.2 kilowatt hours so far. Two hours and 42 minutes. Okay, it will take another two hours and 44 minutes until we are done. And deviation is still at. Um, 20 to 30 millivolt I would say it goes up and down all the time depends when the BMS measures 40 degrees in the BMS 34 in the battery compartment average cell voltage still at 3.25 volts everything is looking good we are at 0% 50.5 volts smart chunk claims 2% and we have discharged 275 ampere hours so far which is 14.2 kilowatt hours and we are still above 50 volts so there might be another yeah I think we will definitely go over 300 ampere hours all right my friends I think we are very close now battery is at 0% for a while we are at 46.6 volts average voltage is 2.9 volts and deviation 65 millivolt which is fantastic for this low voltage this low deviation okay let's have a look at this march on test I think the inverter will shut down any moment as well so we are very close to a shutdown still 2.85 volts is the minimum so we have close to 300 ampere hours 15.3 kilowatt hours <laughs> that is insane that is a lot okay i think we stay with the um, smart chunt here on the screen recording and have a look on the display here what's going on 45 volts we've got now 99 85 millivolt deviation 2.8 average lowest voltage 2.7 cell number 11 but look at this they're all at 2.8 volts none of them is at 2.9 and this is at 2.78 the red one so it's a fairly consistent discharge very well matched cells do we hit the 300 ampere hours let's see what is the inverter saying 44.9 volts as well still 2.3 kilowatts 2.4 kilowatts almost we are pulling 54 volts we usually don't discharge that low but in a capacity test you do we are now at 299 ampere hours and the last LED the last light is flashing here 2.73 right 44.3 volts now Wow 140 millivolt deviation 2.7 volts number 11 299.9 ampere hours 
beautiful 300 there we go amazing for 200 ampere hour batteries we can discharge 300 in a pack discharge test yeah not single cell that's a pack discharge test you, if you discharge a whole pack you usually get a lot less than if you discharge the individual cells or temperature 42 in the BMS and 40 in the battery 15.5 kilowatt hours discharged with point with point 0.2 C it discharging with 40 amps only because the Tesla is pulling less power we are probably not yeah we are probably down to 206 volts now so the Tesla realizes that and pulls less power from the source ah, inverter has shut down oh no maybe here yeah we've got a low disconnect protection cell number 11 at 2.5 let's turn off the inverter and we are quickly charging the battery just a tiny bit rising the voltage so the alarm goes away and the smart charge starts working again i think at 2.6 it turns back on and then we should see the alarm light going away as well 2.597 2.6 takes a few seconds maybe i've changed it i don't know yeah, I don't know why the smart shunt actually resets then and uh, shows a different number than before because we already had 15.5 kilowatt hours. So I guess we could say 15.6 kilowatt hours and 301, 302 ampere hours discharged from this battery here. Let's have a quick look in the BMS 180 uh, millivolt deviation. We can see cell number 11 is still the lowest. But the spread is not much. At this low voltage of 43 volts it was, it is not much. So very well matched and consistent cells here from Yishi Young. Very good quality. So and for everyone interested, we could charge the Tesla from 53 kilometers all the way up to 148 kilometers. Charging stopped unexpectedly. Please check controls here. Yeah, we, just, we just killed the power, right? All right, my friends, there you have it. Quick discharge test with the Yishi Yang delivered EVE LF280K measuring over 300 ampere hours in a pack discharge test, right? In a pack discharge test. If you measure them individually, you will get a bit more. And in the last video, we have already seen the stickers on these um, battery cells. They were all tested at about 307 to 309 ampere hours. So getting 302, 303 ampere hours out of a whole pack is fantastic. All right, guys, as always, I link these battery cells down under the video as well as on my website. Yish Young has very good high quality battery cells. And as I said in one of the last videos, LF280K from EVE are up for grabs. You can get very cheap deals online now because the warehouses are full of these cells and everyone wants the new MB30, MB31 cells, of course. But as you can see, these ones deliver over 300 ampere hours as well in a pack discharge test. So totally fine with these cells all the information and links are down below guys ah, subscriber huh we are still doing this we did it oh my god nine nine zero three four guys thank you so much for 99,000 subscribers that is mind-blowing sensational thank you very very much and thank you very much to everyone else as well for either donating, becoming a channel member, clicking the thanks button, leaving comments, sharing, liking, everything you are doing. Even just watching these videos here, thank you very, very much for that. This all helps out and makes these videos possible here. All right, uh, until the next video, guys, when we... I haven't got any plans for the next video. I'll figure something out. There's <laughs> still plenty of work to do here before the aircon comes, which I am so looking forward to. Until the next video, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye. Very good. Very good cells. I like them.